After another entire day of just mooching about in Cenarius' realm, Kratos realised that they were being watched. It took him a further 12 hours to realise that this observer had nothing to do with Cenarius. Through the process of elimination, the Dragon Mage pieced together who or what this secretive watcher could actually be. It was one of his own kind, a dragon. It wasn't uncommon for dragons to send out observers. All races have their spies, but dragons also had a tendency to not get involved unless a threat was absolutely imminent, which in this particular situation would be leaving it too late, Kratos thought. He was going to need to force the issue. So, after waiting for Ronin to nod off, which is another form of passing out, Kratos rose, carefully shielded his own thoughts, and stared directly towards a nearby tree. I know you. I know what you are, Watcher. However, nothing. No reply. I know you. Cloaked as part of the tree. You watch us. And the Forest Lord. You wonder who we are. And why we're here. This time, Crisis felt a present stir. Only slightly. The Observer was uncomfortable. Good. As much I can tell you. Things I could not tell to the Lord of the Forest. But I would speak with more than just the trunk of a tree. You risk us both. The demigod could be watching us. You know as well as I do that he's not here. Again, silence, and a brief pause, until finally... Who are you? A kindred spirit, you might say. <laughs> you do not know at all what you suggest. I know exactly what I suggest. I know it as well as I do that she who is called Alex Straza is the Queen of Life. He who is called Nosdorma is time itself. Ysira is she of the dreaming, and Malagos is magic incarnate. The mysterious figure hesitated for a moment. You did not mention one. And Naltharion is the earth and rock itself, water of the land. Such names are known by few outside my kind, but they are known by a few. By what name might I know you, that I should think you kindred? I am known as Coriolstras. Again, the mysterious figure hesitated. I could not fail to know that name. Not when it belongs to a consort of the Queen of Life. But something is amiss. I've observed everything since your capture. You are like none of my kind. Cenarius is powerful. Very much so. But he should not so readily hold the one called Coriolstras as his hostage. I've been injured badly. I must reach Alex Straza and tell her what I know. Can you take me to her? Just like that. <laughs> you certainly have the arrogance of a dragon. Why should I risk for all dragons the umbrage of the woodland deity on your questionable identity alone? Because the potential threat to our world is more important than the dignity of a demigod. If you permit it, I will reveal to you what I mean. The mysterious figure considered this for a moment. I don't trust you. But in your condition, I don't think I have much to fear from you either. Show me what colours your words with such anxiety, if you know how. So, Graces reached out with his mind and touched the strangers, linking them both. And then, the Dragon Mage unveiled the truth. All of it, causing the other dragon to stumble back under the rush of intense images. Impossible. Probable, I would say. Those were pure figments of your creation. Would that they were. You see now why I must speak with our queen. What you're asking is... However, both dragons then froze, sensing an overwhelming force approaching. Scenarius. Balls. The Watcher began to retreat. You cannot afford to ignore this. I must see Alexstrasza. The flowers beneath Krasis' feet then started to spew out strange dust, and the Dragon Mage's brain started to feel very foggy. But strong arms then caught him before he could fall on his face. I'm a fool for doing this. And then Krasis passed out. Meanwhile, Boxigar and Malfurion darted through the forest atop their panthers. They've not been given a single chance to stop since the last chapter because they had a whole bunch of night elves hot on their heels. And just to make things more annoying, Boxigar then completely lost sight of Malfurion because the bloke disappeared into a murky fog. And before Brox could even yell out for a bit of direction, his own panther then shifted suddenly to avoid running directly into a massive rock. He landed with a thud and cursed loudly, but there was no time to moan. His pursuers were already nearly upon him. So he picked himself up and got into his fighty stance. However, 
Instead of a bunch of night elves bursting through the bushes, a panting four-legged monster jumped out. <laughs> the beast stumbled and howled, whilst Brox just glared at it and maintained eye contact the entire time. However, Brox's panther mount then reappeared, charging in and colliding with the beast. Now, the panther probably wasn't going to win that fight, but Brox didn't give a shit. He started to back away, turned, and then found himself face to face with a second fell beast. Oh, for fuck's sake. Brox then started to cheese it, running as fast as he could through the forest with a demon snapping at his heels. And after a bit of that, the mournful whelp of a dying panther filled the air. Great, Brox thought. Soon there will be two fell beasts snapping at my heels. And unfortunately, that slight distraction caused Brox to stop looking where he was going, so he tripped over a tree branch and fell on his face. But, as the fell beast that had been chasing him pounced, he quickly grabbed a stick, but he stabbed the twat. The other fell beast with the broken nose then approached, snarling and salivating, and again Brox glared deep into the creature's eyes, when suddenly, vines and roots and stuff burst from the forest floor and ensnared the beast. Brox! Malfurion then arrived, hoisting Brox up onto the back of his mount. Thanks. I owe you again. You owe me nothing. That trap won't hold the beast for long. Sure enough, the fell beast's tentacles whipped against the grass and weeds around it, and within moments, it was free. However, a very loud sound of a horn then filled the air, but that just made Malfurion feel worse. He'll ride directly into that beast. If you wish to stay and fight the creature with them, I'll stand at your side. Both the druid and the orc knew that doing so would mean Brox's death or recapture. So, with a heavy heart, Malfurion urged his mount forward, away from both Fellbeast and the approaching night elves. Meanwhile again, Ronan awoke, feeling very uneasy. He sat up and very quickly realised that his companion was nowhere to be seen. Where is the other one? Where is your friend? I don't bloody know. I just woke up. Cenarius frowned, making Ronin feel even more very uneasy. There are troubling signs in the world. Some of the others have sensed intruders. Creatures, not of any natural origin sniffing around. Seeking something. Or someone. And they come so soon after you and your friend drop from nowhere. Ronin suspected what these unknown creatures might be. And if those suspicions were correct, then that meant they had even less time than they realised. Your friend could not have escaped without assistance. But he leaves you behind. Why is that? I... There were those among the others that insisted I should have given you to them immediately. They believe we should have used more thorough means to find out the reasons for your being here. Up until now, I'd convinced them otherwise. Ronin's attuned senses then detected the presence of another powerful force behind him. However, his entire body was now not obeying his commands to turn around and look. You admit you were wrong then? I admit only that other steps must be taken. Very well. The truth will be known, and known soon. 